Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint's Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point, now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. We are coming at you on April 14th, 2021, uh, about three months or so into the Biden administration. And boy, is it uh, one crazy thing after another. But before we get into any of that, let me introduce you to our panel. In our upper left-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Ever. He is a pilot in the state of California. And in our upper right-hand corner, we have Leon the Word Brathwaite, last word in liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. My name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. Uh, so let's jump right into it. Uh, a lot of crazy stuff from Biden's and the Democrat Party. Uh, specifically infrastructure. Everything's infrastructure right now, and they're trying to get through, I guess, a $2 trillion infrastructure package. And when I say everything is infrastructure, literally to the Democrats, everything is infrastructure, whether they're talking about child care or I guess whatever, if they want it, it's infrastructure. Uh, so, and, you know, we are trillions in debt already. Um, you know, we're at scary times ahead as far as, you know, we're going to get a real test of this modern monetary theory as we go forward because the Democrats <laughs> are just throwing everything at the wall and because they're in charge and most of it's sticking. So, um, you know, it's a uh, scary time. So you guys have any thoughts on all of this infrastructure? Uh, <clears throat> if you don't mind, Leon. <clears throat> of course, of course. I'll, I'll go up. Uh, so, let's see, it was day before yesterday, I think, uh, the U.S. Treasury Department um, published their monthly financial statement to the public. We are at this point, which is uh, halfway through the fiscal year, which started October in 2020, $1.7 trillion uh, in arrears. In other words, that's our, our deficit for this six months going into the fiscal year 1.7 trillion now um <clears throat> so we've got this other two trillion so oh, by, little... the, by the way for our, our guest our for our, our viewers deficit that just related to our annual spending that's not related to the debt which is oh, yeah. over world war ii levels i mean we're going 20, to 28 trillion yeah. it's uh 28 trillion let's see where is that yeah um Sorry, Tim, well, I just anyway, wanted to make sure that the yeah. audience was clear on what you're talking about. Oh, so, that's yeah. right. Because, you know, I see that all the time. Uh, people confuse the deficit with the debt. And, and, right. and they say, oh, Clinton uh, was the only president that reduced the debt. Well, no, he, no one has for the last, I don't know how many, probably over 100 years. I think it was Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson was the last one that reduced the debt, total debt. No, no, but Clinton, I, and now I'm getting off track here, but Clinton uh, reduced the deficit one of his years, and, you know, that was it, uh, which was a good thing. I'm not saying, you know, that, that he's bad, but it, but people have this, they confuse deficits to debt. So, um, you know, you have a house, you've got a mortgage of, of $100,000 on it. Let's just say that's your only debt. And uh, one year, your bills for that house a total um, two thousand bucks, and you made uh, payments on them of uh, fifteen hundred bucks. Now you're f another five hundred dollars in the holes. So I don't know. That, maybe that's a bad way to explain it. But anyway, um, so one point seven trillion dollars in in deficit for fifty percent of the way into the year. And uh, so we got another half a year to go, and we've um, already, they're talking $2 trillion, and who knows how much that's going to end up being after all the spending is, is sorted through and, and accomplished. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, you, you could pretty much be assured that we're going to continually uh, increase the debt, okay? So, <laughs> so that $28 trillion in total debt, I think that's pretty close to where it's at right now. Or uh, maybe a, what Leon help me out here. What's what's total debt right now? It's about twenty eight. You're right. You're right. Twenty eight trillion. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So it, you know it'll it'll be at least um, thirty trillion and probably more, which kind of goes uh, along with the trend here. It's like uh, 
if a president's allowed to have two terms, they double the national debt. So, for example, Obama started with 10 trillion, ended with 20 trillion after eight years. Okay, so he doubled the debt. Now had um, now so along comes Trump. He started with 20 trillion. To double that, he would have had to go to 40 trillion dollars. Well, halfway through uh, his two, so he only got to to serve one term. One term, yes. Yeah. yeah. So he, um, you know, he's uh, he almost put us uh, an additional 10 trillion. Not not quite. Uh, but who knows what would have happened if he would have continued on. Well, certainly with uh, with the Democrats around, uh, you know, you can expect that, especially with their, you know, there, there's no Bill Clinton here. I'd, I'd, I'd love to have Bill Clinton right now, actually, uh, but there is no Bill Clinton. So uh, they are well on their way to, by the end of the Biden term, I will place them at wager here. I'll bet the debt will be 40 trillion, four zero trillion dollars. So where's all this money coming from? Well, foreign debt was about a third back in 2008 of the total um, debt um, uh, owed by the U.S. government was owned. The debt was owned. In other words, they coughed up the money uh, to purchase the, the treasury bonds or the tre treasury notes or bills or however they bought the debt. And... <clears throat> They um, they were a third. Now they have halved that. Now they're only 16 percent. So that's because they're not getting any money back. So why should they? Plus, there's the danger of uh, of the U.S. defaulting on the debt. So who's buying all the debt? Well, it's the it's the Federal Reserve. So they're just printing the money and purchasing the debt. And so that, you know, that that's in the form of their reserves that have just skyrocketed over the last um last uh, five to whatever years, you know, um, actually 10 years. And uh, so uh, th there you have it. So, okay, that's all I want to say about infrastructure. That's a local issue, okay? I don't want to be buying a bridge in Illinois. And I would expect that people in Chicago don't want to buy and repair a bridge in San Diego, okay? I just don't... I. I I can understand that notion. That's a local thing. And the federal government has absolutely zero constitutional authority to, to involve itself in infrastructure outside of those parameters that have already been um, part of the program. And those are the two things. That's aviation, the airports, and uh, that is um, the... Um, uh, 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 the highway system. Yeah, this is yeah. the interstate highway system. That's it. Okay, everything else is unconstitutional in my opinion. Well, I think the waterways also, you know, the waterways they probably will have some involvement. And in the that. waterways, right? Yes. Only because of of uh, interstate trade is what the yes. whole idea is. There. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But you know, but you know the um, the whole thing about this thing is that we see what the left does all the time. What they do, they redefine words. So they come along and they tell us now, oh, we're going to do infrastructure. And we think, okay, all right. Maybe it's not a good thing that you're spending all this damn money, but okay, you're going to do infrastructure. But who the hell would think that infrastructure is going to mean the things that they mean? Now, <laughs> childcare is infrastructure. Um, the Green New Deal, some of the things that are part of the Green New Deal, that's infrastructure too. So these people are spending us in, uh, are spending us into oblivion. Our children and grandchildren and great grandchildren is probably going to have to pay for this if we don't go bankrupt before then. Leon, Leon, while you're talking to, I'm going to pull up an image from a past show that we did that just gives people a visual of what the debt to GDP is like. Sure. So I'm going to do that. You just keep on talking though. Okay. Yes. But, 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 but the point is, though, it does not matter which party is in power, okay? It is true the Republicans tend to be a little more restrained. The Democrats seem to spend to, in, in its full glory. But both parties are just spending us into oblivion. 
during the pandemic, we had the Republicans spending trillions of dollars, or they're going to stimulate the economy. They need to send this out and send that out. For what? They locked down the economy. They, destroy, they destroyed our lives, uh, the lives of our fellow citizens with their nonsense. And now they're going to help us. I, how are they going to help us? They're going to spend. They're going to send us these wonderful checks that's going to save our lives. And they're going to spend on all these other so-called things that is going to stimulate the economy. <clears throat> all this garbage is going on under, under Republicans and it's going on under Democrats. We're going to stop this thing. Otherwise, we're going to be in real serious trouble in terms of managing our finances going forward. Leon, yeah, we, we just we just broke your leg, so here's a crutch. Aren't we nice? <laughs> well, Leon, can, can you guys see the image uh, on your screen uh, that I have showing? No, we have no image yeah. yet. Or, oh, okay. there it is. No, no, yeah. no it is. There it is. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so anyway, so this is a uh, graphic that was put out before the pandemic. I I, I remember we we did this on one of our first shows. Um, yes. As we came out of uh, as as we were going into this crazy lockdown scenario and. I mean, I couldn't believe what I was hearing, you know, the, 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 when they were just talking about a two week lockdown, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, yeah. this is the CBO numbers from 2019. Okay. They put these out. And this line represents 2019. You can see it's coming right down here. And this is debt to GDP. So uh, essentially, it tells how much we are um, in debt relative to what it is, the, the gross domestic product uh, that, that we have. And so you can see here, um, after adding several trillion, we're up here right now, uh, you know, way before projection. The, the, the CBO was thinking we'd be at this level um, right around the time that uh, uh, 2030. So like we're almost 10 years ahead of where they thought we'd be on this runaway debt, essentially. Yeah. Yes. And this yeah. is essentially World War II. Now, if you look back at our history as a country, you know, we, we did pretty well early on where, you know, industrial revolution, we weren't, you know, we were keeping things pretty tight. Then World War One comes around and we really start ramping up the debt to civil war levels. And then we we get we never quite recover from that. And then you get the New Deal and boom, World War Two. And fortunately, we, we became a lot more. Productive, so we were able to, to bring some of that down. But now it's you know, you got to wonder, I mean, that what led us to these levels before was always a big war, right? And now yes. it's like, what what do we have to show for it? I mean, we're in a pretty bad situation, and this has all been on social, you know, spending, um, you know, military industrial complex to police the world, all kinds of things like that. And things aren't, you know, I mean, you, you might be able to say that, hey, maybe this isn't so bad if if we're in a great place. Are we in a great place? I don't know. I mean, it looks like we're in a pretty scary place and and we've already shot the wad and they're talking about essentially just creating money now. Uh, modern monetary theory. Hey, doesn't matter. We can just print this stuff up because, you know, everybody's going to continue to accept our dollars. So don't worry about it. And, you know, as long as people have demand, we can keep printing. And that's, you know, I, I, gosh, I mean, this really is getting into well, scary yeah. now. Yeah, there is no demand. Um because that's why the you know nobody's buying the debt now it, it's a little bit of a misnomer that it says federal he debt held by the public and they have this huge thing going no it's going to be held by the by the federal reserve bank it's going to be held by the eccles building people in there just that are printing it up out of nothing that's who's going to hold the debt it's not like there's going to be americans that are going to oh goody goody i get 0.5 percent return on a 10-year treasury uh note that i buy or uh, i don't know if it's a note or a bill or whatever but it, you know that's that's all i'm gonna get so you know and, and meanwhile we have even with the the idiotic uh uh consumer price index that the government throws out at least two percent well you just lost one and a half percent on your money that you if you were stupid enough to buy government debt so nobody's doing that including and and uh, central banks and foreign nations are, are just dumping it. They've dumped it since 2008 in half from 32 percent down to 16 or whatever it is right around there. And uh, so what this this shows is, you know, there it is, 1971, when we went off the gold standard, that's when this this main upswing occurred. When there, yeah, right there, and so you know, outside of that little blip, I think that's that's um, 
uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Clinton. And then, uh, boom, it just continues to resume shortly thereafter. I mean, that's just all that represents is just a, a little bit less of an increase. Okay. And, it's still and by increased. the way, this, this steep margin right here is from our bailout from the housing crisis. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah. That's but you see, but you see, this is the thing though. This, what is happening here is the government, the federal government in particular, is getting involved in all sorts of things that they are not constitutionally author uh, authorized mm -hmm. to do. Yeah. And this is what is causing these problems. For instance, they they got involved with this health care, with the Obamacare stuff, the uh, some some of the spending that went that even some of the something that go to infrastructure is probably unconstitutional. That probably is probably is unconstitutional. I I repeated myself, but the point is though. But the point is though, the federal government is getting involved in many things that are unconstitutional, that that they have no authority whatsoever. Why is the federal government involved in education, say for that matter? Why? They have no yeah. constitutional authority to do that. Yeah, and exactly. so and so it go. And have a horrible that, track record. I'm I'm sorry, Tim. Go ahead. And have a horrible track record. Not only do they not have authority uh, to to get involved in education, but their uh, track record ever since they've been involved in education is abysmal. Horrible. Yeah, true. Very true. And so, you know, in other words, they've damaged education rather than enhanced it. If you just look at the, the studies of the, the test results of students over over the, the past years, it's only been like 30 or 40 years that they've been involved in education. But ever since, it's been horrible. And yes. uh, just, just one more um, uh, point about, you know, that there's those that think that, oh, because now we have this this whole new total fiat currency throughout the world and all these central banks and, you know, and, and all this stuff that the system, you know, the monetary system can just take, can handle enormous amounts of debt, okay, trillions of dollars of debt. Well, I'm here to say that they are plumbing the depths of that, that, uh, that theory. They are definitely plumbing the depths. They are, and, and this this is so typical, this is what governments have always done throughout human history, is they keep plumbing those depths until they hit the point that triggers total collapse in the monetary system. And I know we've been saying it over and over until we're blue in the face. Uh, in in uh, Leon's case, uh, he kind of turned black. He used to be just like me. And <laughs> look what happened because he kept saying, this is not going to turn out well. And, well, it's, uh, it's given him so much stress, his beard turned white. <laughs> yes, no, 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 I'm hope, you know, no, Tim, Tim, I hope that was not a subtle call of, uh, by, of calling me a, a person of color, okay? I hope that was not a subtle attempt. All right, I'm subtle. very distressed at one. <laughs> that was that was very very unsubtle attempt. Yes. <laughs> so. But you know what's so terrible is the incentives. I yeah. mean, these politicians. That's their incentive. I mean, they yeah. they, they they essentially buy votes, uh, like Biden tried to do right before the election. Hey, I'll give you two thousand dollars if you yeah. vote for yes. me. That was essentially the pitch to voters in Georgia, right? But you know, they, the, the point is that it doesn't harm them at all because the incentive is if they spend. You know, the, the, the problem's going to come farther down the road. They get into right. office, they get whatever power they're looking for, and the problems are somebody else's to deal with later yeah. down the road. Yeah, they're spending, they're spending other people's money to, yeah. to, to, to gain power and, gain, and to win elections. That's what they're yeah. doing. Other they people's the, money. They get the accolades and the votes, and somebody else gets the bill. Exactly. Yeah. In the but future. You know, the, the sad thing is, with all this, we really only have one check at this point in the system. And that's the Supreme Court. And at this point, Biden is now started a committee to investigate packing that Supreme a Court. Commission, well, a commission. So, yes, yeah, a commission. Yeah, a commission to look into that. Because this is one of the things he was asked about. He said during, remember, this is Lion Biden, right? Be, during the uh, campaign, he said to everybody, uh, you know, that he, he wasn't, you know, uh, you know, uh, that, that that wasn't what he was about is packing the court. Well, now he's looking into it, right? Because, yeah. you know, anything to expand their power base and essentially expand government and take away your liberty, that's what they're looking at right now. Well, anyways, you guys yeah. got any thoughts about this? Well, you first know, off, here we I'm go gonna, again, you know, I'm sorry, Tim, you want to go? It's okay. No, no, go ahead. I cut in last time. So, you're oh, no, 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 it's fine. It's no problem. <laughs> no. 
But here, but here we go again, you know. Biden is calling this reform, you know. Reform. Another redefinition of words. The left always, whenever they have outcomes that they don't like, they always have to redefine a word and try to uh, redefine something and try to ram it down our throats. So they don't like the ruling. They, well, they don't like the makeup of the court. That's the only problem. They don't like the makeup of the court. There are five and a half conservatives on the court right now. I say half because John Roberts is a little bit wobbly these days. <laughs> I don't know if that's where he's going. But he seems yeah. to be very uh, wobbly. But so they're probably going to end up give, giving out rulings, uh, give, uh, producing decisions that the left is not going to like. So what do they have to do now? They have to come along, say, oh, we need reform. The court is out of whack. Out of whack compared yeah. to what? Compared to what? Uh, compared to a completely uh, liberal dominated court. That's how it's out of whack to where they get everything they want, like you say. That's the only reason he thinks it's out of whack, because it's not 100 percent liberal, democratically appointed uh, uh, justices. Go ahead. And so. Sure. So, yeah. Sure. But I, thanks for that clarification. My, my small brain couldn't figure that out. <laughs> couldn't figure that out you know, you know? <laughs> But but this is what they do though. This is what they do. Yeah. They they don't like they don't like the makeup of the court. So now they decide, well, we have to put it back in balance. And listen to the nice words they're using. Oh, it's out of whack. We need to put it in balance. We need to, to, to fix things a little bit, just jiggle things just a little bit so that we can have a more a more diverse court, a more um, a court that will give us rule a more balanced rulings. But all of it. They have one goal in mind. They want the court to produce decisions that are in keeping with their radical agenda. That is all they are trying to do. And this is garbage. Really, it is. So uh, I was just going to say, uh, yeah, good points, Leon. Uh, Thanks. I was uh, going to say that it's, it's uh, I know you wanted to segue into this court packing thing, uh, but uh, the courts, I don't think are, I think that's debatable that, uh, um, that, uh, what was I saying? <laughs> um, it's debatable that the court stands in the way of this increased debt. In other words, no, that that's a, uh, and I know you just did it for a segue, but well, it, it's but, still an uh, increase in growth of government, ability to just, at a whim, be able to, you know, do oh, things I they see. Do, right? I mean, I mean, look at Obama. So they with, might... uh, uh, the, uh, what do you call it, Obamacare. You know, well, okay. essentially, that was a uh, Supreme Court decision that wound up that's potentially standing in the way. And instead, uh, they just gotcha. held up a cape and went uh, away and let them through. Okay. <laughs> Good yeah. point. Okay, so, I stand corrected yes. then. Let's yeah. Let's move on then. But That's but next. the court but the courts could do something about these things to the extent to the extent that these things interfere with our liberties. They could they could do something about it. For example, if that court decision about Obamacare had gone the other way in 2012, if it had gone the other way, we it could have limited some of the spending that had been occurring as a result of the Obamacare the, the, the Obamacare law. But but the, 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 this is the thing though. The courts have permitted too much encroachments upon our liberties. The government, the federal government in particular, I think they have free reign. And there we go. They spend as they, as they damn well please. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, we will uh, head into our knucklehead noise patrol at this point. Our knucklehead noise patrol is going to try to find something silly that somebody has said, uh, either a politician or a uh, you know celebrity or something. And in this case, it's uh, Kirsten Gillibrand. Uh, I guess she's a senator, uh, a Democrat senator from. She's, she's a junior senator from New York. Oh, okay, New York. Okay, uh, and her uh, a particular tweet is right in line with what we're talking about here, and it's just simply the redefining of words for the purposes of spending. And you know, who knows? I mean, may, maybe there is a role for the courts in that. But essentially, she was uh, saying uh, in an April seventh tweet regarding you know this essentially they want to put everything under infrastructure and she said paid leave is infrastructure child care is infrastructure caregiving is infrastructure so there's literally nothing under under the sun in their minds it isn't infrastructure i'm sure that you know if they have 
prison transsexual su- surgeries. That will be infrastructure. Right? <laughs> I mean, I guess I'll, I'll put that under plumbing. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, you know, I, it's it's just beyond the pale. What is? I mean, essentially, it's about refining words. This is what the Democrats are about. Uh, you guys got any I, thoughts on this? I, I wonder if. Uh ammunition and firearm manufacturing is also infrastructure. Maybe. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad everything's infrastructure. That means that <laughs> that they need to, to bail out Remington, who's, uh, you know, still uh, in the throes, coming, coming back, hopefully, alive uh, from out of bankruptcy. Maybe they could throw a few bones th- that way, or is that just all of a sudden, is that not infrastructure? The, the the manufacture of firearms, you know, because I mean, it's not like the, the military doesn't use those. It's not like the police don't use firearms. Maybe that's, oh, but, oh my God, no, we can't do that. No, 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 no. That's not in the liberal agenda here, okay? <laughs> not at all, not at all. Well, what, if, if but, those bullets are used to keep protesters from the Capitol, it's infrastructure. It's those, infrastructure. <laughs> right. Those bullets but if they're used, used in your home, that's not infrastructure. Yeah, exactly. That's not infrastructure. <laughs> that's it. No, no, sure. You know, but the thing is, but the thing is, but there's one one salient point here is that you know, um, today at two o'clock um, Pacific time, <clears throat> I will go to get uh, my vaccine, the first dose, by the way. But you know, I think I've discovered something here as a result of doing that. I have discovered that there is no vaccine for stupidity because that is what we're looking at right now. This so-called senator, because she is a senator, so-called senator trying to tell us that childcare is infrastructure. So obviously there's some problem with her brain. There must be. And we need a vaccine for that stupidity that, that that woman is walking around with. Jesus, Lord, God help us. If well, this is infrastructure, no child care. I mean, fine, maybe child care is a good thing. I don't know. Well, I raised two children, so I know it's a good thing. But not, not when the government's spending. When I am spending it, it's a good thing. Well, Leon, I actually think there is a vaccine for... Uh, some of the stupidity we've been uh, experiencing, and that's school competition, right? I mean, if we got yes, school, yes. school competition, that actually would cure a lot of this nonsense that comes from the government. Agreed. Agreed. But, yeah. yeah. And unfortunately, that's a topic for another show. I don't think we're going to be able to get into. So maybe, it. so maybe you are contradicting me, Jason, that there is there is a vaccine for some of the stupidity. <laughs> exactly. And it's the government stupidity, the government uh, monopolized stupidity. But. <laughs> about the end of our show today and uh you know hopefully we will uh leon will be able to make it back for the next one after he gets that shot (laughs) (laughs) thank you all for joining us and we will see you at the next one stay free thank you for watching the knuckleheads of liberty listen each week in sacramento on comcast channel 17 for knuckleheads of liberty on monday at 5 30 p.m and the libertarian counterpoint show on thursday at 8 p.m Also on YouTube, Facebook, and podcasts everywhere. We invite you to come again next week for the Libertarian Counterpoint Productions.